Hello, this is Chamber from Reno CTS, and this is Post-Apocalyptic Review. Today, we're not actually reviewing any of these guns. Just trying to show them off. It's all what I have in my little stockyard room. My recent addition is I got back the... Oh, my team back. Awesomeness. And... Other than that... My possession, I also have another Mozzie. So I have three of them all together. But the only ones that aren't mine a little CZ pistol and the shotgun. Alright. Today I am updating all you guys on Cryptic Darkness. Thank you to Glockwork and all the other people trying to support the Cryptic Darkness series, and I just can't appreciate it more than enough. You guys are awesome. I never do knife reviews, but in a survival situation, this thing I got actually for my birthday not too long ago actually is really awesome. Did you get a saw blade? Saw down to get some wood if you're out in the wilderness and you don't have anything else. Plus, it's also a pocket knife as well. Sorry, it's brand new, so it's kind of stiff. But, it's a combination. It's sharp as hell. I've already poked myself with the blades on here. It's amazingly lightweight, and honestly, it's a great survival tool. Better than a regular pocket knife. If you get one of those, then, oh, well, you'll be shabby. One other thing I was going to add to here has nothing to do with guns or firearms, but I figure most of you Resident Evil fans may enjoy this. Not too many of those out there. Got this a couple years back and had to dig it up for Halloween, but it's a liquor mask from the Resident Evil series, movies, and games. Another cryptic darkness spoiler that I have up here is a little preview of the mask I designed for one of the creatures that appears in Cryptic Darkness that actually, in the original plot line, he's the bad guy. But in the storyline I'm writing, he's not quite a good guy, but he's their only line of defense against one of the uh, cult creatures. Well, here's a little preview. Here you go. Design this so the mask is mobile. You've probably seen these in the Halloween stores, but not exactly like mine. Design mine for full mouth features. Cut out some of the parts of the latex around the lips, stuff like that. Got to do a little bit of finishing touches, but in the way I do cryptic darkness, you won't be able to tell the color difference. It all blends in quite the same. I actually wore this for Halloween in the full-on outfit. And it looked pretty cool. And I did scare quite a few kids with it. Especially if I had the black mask underneath and you don't see my actual mouthpiece. And this is so deep in that with most light settings you can't even see the eyes. So this is going to be one of the creatures. He's not going to be in right away. But he will eventually be within the series. Basically, my character, Dan, in the beginning plot line that we haven't actually finished, there is a run-in with him, with this creature. And basically, there's going to be a later run-in into the series where he flashes back to his original meeting with it. Basically, this creature, similar to how Nemesis was in Resident Evil, but not, this creature has a lot more personality. But he's basically invincible. He's actually the cause of the original virus. Because when he was experimented on, his flesh became over-regenerative. And it explains how Chem-X, which is the chemical that awakened the zombie virus, it explains how the zombie virus is a very dormant virus, has had no time to evolve. But with the Chem-X chemical basically turned him into a living nightmare where he consistently regenerates, but it's not all fun and games like they usually do in the movies. His regenerative properties 
cause him pain. Basically, he can take whatever you throw at him, and it's just going to piss him off, and eventually just makes him mad. Which is part of the reason why they look at him as an enemy, because he has no time to assess with any human being. He's too busy fighting off the pain, which causes him to be the main creature. Also, as an update to the Cryptic Darkness series, the sixth episode is taking a long time due to weather conditions and planning out when people can show up, where exactly the storyline is going to turn. But this next episode is definitely looking really well. I just have to get everyone together to do, like, little final scenes. But it's leading up to where Wastelands can be Wastelands a series still, but also adding up to a possible side, like many episodes, that involve particular characters and their diaries of the Wasteland and fighting off the undead, which allows more of... So I don't have to be the main character where it talks about other characters that may even have passed. But it explains their... basically their diary. It's going to be called Wastelander Diaries. It's going to be little shorts. It's just going to be a little thing to add up to... well, Wastelands a series. And I don't like doing short episodes. I wasn't really fond of the third one because I wasn't able to put in everything I wanted originally in there. That's why it was so short. But I really like the 8 to 10 minute episodes. That's part of the reason it's taking so long because I don't like the short episodes. I do to a point if it's just basic story. But there's so much put into the Cryptic Darkness series and such a fan base now. That I don't want to disappoint you guys. I don't want to disappoint myself. That's part of the reason I enjoy doing these series. And I appreciate every last bit of help you YouTubers, anyone on Facebook, give me on this series. You guys are awesome. I would have never even thought of half of the support out there. And I thank you guys very much. And I hope I can keep you guys entertained.